Okay, as you can see in today's video, we're going to go through another example. This is example number four for momentum and elastic collisions. And this is a situation that we have. We have a ball that has a mass of 1.5 kilograms, moving velocity of 10 meters per second, and collides with a second mass that has a mass of 3.8 kilograms, and it's moving in the same direction with a velocity of 2.5 meters per second. And we are going to treat this as a perfectly elastic collision, and we want to know what is the velocity of each of those balls, each of those masses after the collision. Okay, now I like to, since I have two masses and two velocities, I just like to write them down so I don't get them crossed or mixed up. So I put down M1 is 1.5 kilograms. The initial velocity of mass number one is 10 meters per second. Then we have a second mass, which is 3.8 kilograms, and it has a velocity, an initial velocity of 2.5 meters per second. And then, just for the heck of it, I like to just make a quick picture, just draw a couple of objects and indicate their velocities. You could write the numbers in if you want. I just like to show which way they're going, that they're both going the same direction. This one's going faster, so it's going to overtake this one. And of course, we want to know what is the final velocity of mass number one, and we want to know what is the final velocity of mass number two. Okay, so we're just going to take our information with us to the next page here, and we are going to get out the equation. These are just simply the equations we use to calculate the final velocity of mass number one and the final velocity of mass number two. The equations look a little complicated, maybe, but it's just simply either adding or subtracting the masses, multiplying times the initial velocity, then we have 2m and all that other kind of stuff, and multiplying by the initial velocity of mass number two. So mostly it now kind of becomes an algebra problem, and you want to keep your order of operations and your negative and your positive signs straight. So of course, we'll start with mass number one, and we're going to plug the values in for mass number one, and that simply is m1 is 15 and m2 is 3.8. So first we have 1.5 minus 3.8 divided by the sum of those two masses multiplied by the initial velocity of mass number one. And to that we're going to add two times the mass of number two, which is 3.8 kilograms, divided by the sum of those two again, and we multiply that times the initial velocity of mass number two, okay? And when we do that, if you do that carefully, you should get that this is minus 4.3 because this is 1.5 minus 3.8. So this is gonna be a negative term. This is gonna be a positive term, 3.58. And when we add those two together, we get minus 0.76 meters per second. Well, what does that mean if it's minus 0.76 meters per second? That means that mass number one collides with mass number two Remember, mass number one was the smaller mass, and it has 1.5 kilograms compared to 3.8, and that means it's going to basically bounce off and be moving at a relatively low velocity, not 10 meters per second anymore, but 0.76 meters per second in the opposite direction. So if we take this 10 to be positive to the right, now it's going to be moving with a velocity of minus 0.76 meters per second, which is going to be to the left because this is negative. That's what that negative term designates or tells us. Okay, now we're going to do the final velocity for mass number two, and it's basically the same kind of thing. We have this equation, and we're just going to plug the values in, and that's two times the mass of number one, which is 1.5, divided by the sum of the two masses, multiplied once again by the initial velocity of mass number one, and then we're going to take those two terms, and it's m2 minus m1 this time, so it's m2 minus m1, and that's going to give us those values there. And we just do the math again, and now we're going to get that the final velocity of mass number two is, this term is 5.66, this term is 1.08 meters per second, we add those together, and mass number two is now moving with a velocity of 6.74 meters per second. And that makes sense because it's collided, number two collides with number one, number one hits number two, so to speak, and now it's going faster. All right, so those are the values that we got. We got a final velocity for mass number one of minus 0 0.76 meters per second and a final velocity for mass number two of 6.74 meters per second. This is the initial picture we had, and why don't we just draw a final picture. So this one is still moving to the right. It's moving faster. And this one, because this is a negative sign, 0 0.76 meters per second, mass number one is now moving to the left. Okay, 
So there you go. I think that was pretty straightforward. We drew a little picture. We wrote everything down. We used our equations. We were careful with our math. And we got those final values for the velocities. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Leave me a thumbs up for this video. Uh, leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And the last thing is, of course, don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends and show them how much you care. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.